its members. At the Council, we firmly believe in the need to enhance and positively evolve relations between ASEAN, its member states, including the Philippines, and all of Europe, not just on trade and investment issues, but more broadly on ensuring just and equitable economic development and on securing sustainable future for all of us. From working with ASEAN and its member states to improve trade facil facilitation across the region, advance investment regimes to make the region more attractive through to also working for advancements in sustainable development, pushing for faster moves on energy transition and ensuring that the citizens of the region have the skill sets for more digitally connected future. As part of that overall mission, this week we have brought a large business delegation, actually it's the largest ever business delegation to Manila, enabling our members, large European multinational corporates with long-standing presence and significant investments in the Philippines to meet with senior government secretaries and officials. We came out of these meetings, ladies and gentlemen, with a better understanding of the economic and social advances that the Philippines has been making and discussed what it will take to further the case for more investment from European businesses. Over the last decade, we have seen trade and goods between the EU and the Philippines and Filipino exports to the EU more than double. But the trade volumes have much scope for improvement, especially when compared with the trade volumes to other ASEAN member states have with Europe. The same can also be said of the level of investment from Europe to the Philippines. From our meetings last uh, this week and from our previous engagement with you, Mr. President, during our ASEAN-EU Business Summit in Brussels in December 2022, it is clear to me and to us and to our members that the Philippines should be a leading candidate for the recommencement of the free trade agreement negotiations with the EU. We do believe that such an agreement would bring advantages to both the EU and the Philippines and from the speech that President Marcos Jr. gave at our summit at the end of last year, we also believe that a free trade agreement could be achieved relatively quickly. This is something which we have communicated to the European Commission very often, and we will continue to do so. That is why we will be in Brussels in June to support Secretary Pascual's visit, where we will help drive home the message that the recommencement of FTA negotiations with the Philippines is in order. Mr. President, you can be sure of our support in this important matter and our commitment to work with our administration on the sustainable economic development of your country. And at the end, allow me a personal thank you to you, Mr. President. I had the honor to uh, sit next to you over lunch at that summit. I told you that we are coming here in May. You said, I will, I will be there, and thank you for keeping that promise. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, may we please invite His Excellency Luc Veron, Ambassador of the European Union Delegation, to give his opening remarks. Your Excellency, President Ferdinand Marcos, Jr., President of the Republic of the Philippines, Your Excellencies and members of the Diplomatic Corps, Business and industry representatives, ladies and gentlemen, Magandang Gabi Sain Yong Lahat. I'm very pleased to be here today at a time when EU Philippine relations are oriented in one direction forward. Yes, it is undoubtedly 
an optimistic time for EU-Philippines relations. This optimism carries weight as the relationship we have is a long-standing one. The EU will be celebrating 60 years of diplomatic relations with the Philippines next year. Now, when we turn 60, as happened to some of us, we may be tempted to slow down and believe that we have reached a peak. However, the EU and the Philippines are nowhere near the peak. My anticipation grows with each recent achievement. Let me just mention two. The Copernicus Capacity Support Program, the first of its kind in the region, was launched with the Philippine Space Agency. A few weeks ago, there was a decision to prolong the recognition of the certificates issued to Filipino seafarers. On the other hand, you, Mr. President, went to Brussels last year, braved our nasty December weather, and did exactly, exactly what the business dialogue theme was about. You took the Philippines center stage in Brussels. So while we have reached many milestones in our decades-long friendship, I look forward to celebrating many more. Our relationship is inch on common strategic interests. Both the EU and the Philippines champion accountability and rule of law, and both the EU and the Philippines champion a rules-based international order. We value that your country has consistently voted with the Europe and the international community to urge the end of the Russia's aggression towards Ukraine. In the same vein, we strongly recognize the need to respect international law in the West Philippine Sea. In the economic field, we acknowledge the efforts of the Philippine government to create a more conducive investment climate, notably the passage of a number of legal reforms that further open up the economy to foreign investment. Allow me to underscore also, the crucial link between an effective justice system and the prosperity of commercial and entrepreneurial endeavors. By acknowledging the importance of promoting the rule of law, establishing accountability, and facilitating accessible avenues for seeking redress, we can cultivate a more favorable business climate. Through measures aimed at improving the ease of conducting business, fostering economic expansion, stimulating innovation, and bolstering entrepreneurial initiatives, the Philippines can become an increasingly attractive option for European Union investors. Such efforts, coupled with the values of inter and interest I have just mentioned earlier, will, I am convinced, help pave the way for a more prosperous and sustainable Philippine economy. My EU colleagues and I, as well as the Chamber, are committed to help smoothen the path for the Philippines for more prominence on the EU map. But it's only your government that can keep the country on this path through effective implementation of its plan reform. In the end, we're all working towards the same goal, to strengthen our ties and uphold our common values. Maraming, maraming salamat and a nice evening to you all. Thank you, Ambassador Veron. May we now call on the President of the European Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines, Lars Wittig, to give his message. Your Excellency, President Ferdinand Magas Jr., President of the Republic of the Philippines, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and a privilege to address you this evening as President of the European Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines. As the oldest European Chamber outside of Europe, we are proud to have served the voice of European business community here in the Philippines for 45 years now. Advocating the Philippine global competitiveness 
and economic openness. In the most recent years, we have seen just that, a wave of game-changing economic reforms in a number of key investment areas, as well as notable improvements in our doing business ranking. There has been indeed a great momentum and interest in the Philippines more than ever. With all these positive developments, I say this with strong conviction. The time for increased trade and bigger investments is now. There's no better time to invest in the Philippines than now. It is incumbent upon us to champion the Philippines as an investment destination and to put the Philippines in the spotlight. Also at the top of our wish list is the retention and the reapplication of the EU general scheme of preferences plus, as well as the rec um, recommencement of the free trade agreement negotiations with the EU. We appreciate that EUSA and Business Council's faith in the Philippines as one of the leading candidates for the conclusion of bilateral EU FTAs. Apart from the benefits of the FTA, we believe that the set measures will support the overall direction of the Marcos administration and our shared goal of a prosperous and sustainable Philippines. Going beyond our trade and economic related advocacies, the ECCP has also appre appreciates the eight point socioeconomic agenda of the current administration, which touches on the following ensuring food security, re reducing transport, logistics, and energy costs, accelerating COVID 19 pandemic recovery ensuring sec sound macroeconomic fundamentals, creating more jobs by promoting investments, improving infrastructure, enhancing the digital economy, and ensuring a level playing field by strengthening market competition and reducing barriers to entry and limits to entrepreneurship. These, in principle, are aligned with our Chamber core values and advocacies. With this, let me end my message, Mr. President, by saying that the ECCP commits to continue working with the Philippine government to co contribute towards achieving a greener, more inclusive, prosperous, and sustainable Philippines. Thank you. Thank you, President Vitek. At this juncture, may we please call on Executive Secretary Lucas Bersamin to introduce our guest of honour. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Republic of the Philippines, His Excellency Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. Thank you all very much, uh, Executive uh, Secretary Lucas Bersamin, for your introduction. Please, please take your seats. Uh, with us here is the House Speaker, uh, Speaker Martin Romaldes, back from his uh, adventures in the House. <laughs> the Ambassador of the, of the European Union to the Philippines, Ambassador Luc Veron, the Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, EU ASEAN Business Council Chairman Jean Roubert, who uh, reminded me that when uh, we were in Brussels, uh, that the, the winter was so cold that I had lost my voice and I was squeaking away through the days and through my speeches. So on the way over here, I was looking up, I could hear the thunder in the rain, and I said, aha, I got my revenge. <laughs> European Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines, President Lars Wittig, our friends in the private sector, fellow workers in government, other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
Good evening to you all. The, there is a saying that the greatest business deals ever made are done on the golf course. Perhaps this is true, but with a scorching heat index of 40 degrees Celsius here right now, I guess we're better off indoors for now. And let's just add to that the danger of lightning strike as you take your swing. As this evening will prove, we are equally capable of striking good deals here in the cool comfort of this elegant hall. On behalf of the Filipino people, I thank very warmly the EU ASEAN Business Council and the European Chamber of Commerce in the Philippines for having organized this business dialogue and trade mission trip to the Philippines, which culminates in this lovely gala dinner. I also extend our gratitude to the entire business delegation from the EU, especially the companies that hold operations in the Philippines already, for their plans and investments that directly contribute to our economic development. I hope your visit to the Philippines has been pleasant and enjoyable thus far. Now in its 10th year, this edition of the Business Dialogue holds much promise. The Philippines shows healthy signs of recovery from the economic downturn brought about by the pandemic. We are very proud to have registered a 7.6 GDP growth rate in 2022. It signifies that the, there is a highly resilient sector of very strong economic activity in the country. Early, earlier this year, we rolled out our Philippine Development Plan for 2023 to 28, which I approved shortly after the business summit in Brussels last December. Forming, and we, uh, we, were able, we put this together from much of the uh, discussions that we had made there, and to hear from uh, our potential investors what it is that they are looking for. And so we put that, 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 that was a very, very uh, helpful exercise for us to finally come down with our own economic development plan which is centered on partnerships and, of course, on trade, and even, in this case, uh, looking for non-traditional partners in trade, uh, non-traditional suppliers, non-traditional markets. And this is necessitated by the fact, by the experience that we have had, where we were complacent uh, in the thought that the suppliers that we were using will always be available for us. Those markets that we sell to will always be open. And that, uh, as we all know, has changed drastically. And that's why there is that very important need uh, to adjust. So forming the base of this transformative plan for our country during this administration is the creation of an enabling environment that shall facilitate the attainment of tangible socio-economic goals for our people. The enabling environment covers vital areas and concerns, especially infrastructure, strategic investments, peace, security and justice, good governance, regulatory efficiency, financial stability, and last but not least, climate resilience. We have already begun implementing strategies along these lines as well as the beneficial policies and projects that were laid down by my predecessors. We have broadened the range of liberalized businesses and sectors to include public services, retail trade, and renewables, amongst others. We have made our system of corporate taxation more business-friendly, with a lower tax rate and improved mechanism for tax and duties incentives. To facilitate and expedite strategic investments throughout their whole life cycles, express or green lanes are established to integrate streamlining permitting and approval processes and remove unnecessary barriers and redundancies. All these bode well for a stronger and more productive relationship between the Philippines and the EU. Overall, these enhance the features of the Philippines as an attractive trade and investment destination. If there is uh, one, uh, um, one thought that I came away from Brussels with is that we can feel a discernible shift in terms of attention for trade by Europe to Asia. And that, uh, and that uh, really triggered many of the measures that we had enacted, the, the changes we have to legislation, the changes that we made to the ease of doing business, 
the uh, changes that we have, the, the, the work that we have done to improve the situation with the power in terms of supply and in terms of cost. And in, in, in embedded in that uh, power's problem is the shift from renewables, from uh, traditional fossil fuels to renewables. I, we, are not, we are not alone in doing all of this, and I think I know that every country uh, is doing the same thing. But one thing that I came away with as well is that we all think that renewables, is, we do this because it is good for the environment. Well, of course it is, because we have to mitigate and adapt to the effects of climate change. However, as practical businessmen, it has also become a a, a practical problem that we must face in terms of our markets. As I'm sure you have all seen, there is a now a very strong trend, especially in Europe and especially in Scandinavia, that all products that are supplied must be shown to have been manufactured by green energy. And so that, that immediately defines how, what your market is, and that includes that very important shift from the traditional fossil fuel uh, source fuel, uh, energy to the renewables that we are all trying to develop. So this solid enabling environment will pave the way for our compliance with vital international obligations as determined by the EU. This condition of compliance will, in turn, guarantee our continued participation in the Generalized System of Preferences Plus scheme. As a result of, G of the GSP Plus, we are optimistic that we shall soon witness a market growth of our MSME sector and our export market in the EU. And also, this will also encourage further foreign investments in our manufacturing sector. With this conducive business atmosphere that we are fostering, we, I believe that we can all agree that the timing and conditions are now quite ripe for us to solidify the long-standing and historically beneficial trade relations through a bilateral Philippine-EU free trade agreement. A bilateral FDA will be a win-win strategy for both the Philippines and the EU. It promises to achieve mutually beneficial economic goals while maintaining consistency with the EU's core ideals of sustainable development and environment protection, as well as with EU's Indo-Pacific strategy. Hence, I take this opportunity to call upon our friends from the EU ABC and the ECCP to actively advocate for the resumption of negotiations for this purpose, as well as to strive for fair treatment and more beneficial reciprocity. As credible voices of the European business community in the Philippines and the region, the EU ABC and ECCP can help move this thing forward all the way to a favorable conclusion. And if and, if and when that happens, it could very well be the capstone of all efforts to strengthen Philippine and EU relations over the course of the next decades. So, join me as I greet you all once again and welcome you to the Philippines and uh, to once again express my uh, uh, gratitude for the uh, interest that you continue to show in the Philippines. So we now have before us so many opportunities. We now have before us so, many, so much potential in terms of growth, in terms of expanding the roles of the EU in ASEAN and, of course, in the Philippines. So thank you once again. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat at mabuhay po tayong lahat. Thank you, Mr. President. At this point, may we please request the President to kindly grant us a photo opportunity. May we invite on stage the gala speakers, heads of the organizers and premium partners. May we please invite on stage the gala speakers Heads of the organizers and premium partners.
thank you. Next, may I please invite the European Heads of Mission on stage. Thank you. May I please now invite members of the Diplomatic Corps and event partners, please proceed to the stage now. May I please invite members of the Diplomatic Corps and event partners, please proceed to the stage now. Thank you. May I now please invite ECCP board members to the stage. Thank you. May I, now, uh, may I now please invite on stage the EU ASEAN Business Council Board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, for granting us a photo opportunity. And that concludes our program. Thank you, Mr. President, for gracing the event today. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency Ferdinand R. Marcos, Jr.